Hey everyone, welcome to a special bonus Locked on Lakers for Sunday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers get robbed in Boston. Yes, flat out robbed. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked on Lakers first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, and sometimes on weekends, especially after the Lakers get absolutely screwed against their traditional rivals in Boston. Always free, never behind a paywall. Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you go to see us look disgusted as we are now. Um, Andy, there's a, a tremendous amount of stuff in this game to unpack big picture, um, and we will do a lot of it for Monday's show. Um, but today for this uh, bonus episode it is simple uh the lakers should have won this game in boston they uh were absolutely 100 percent robbed of it by bad officiating i tell my kids when they play soccer uh don't blame the game on the officials if i'm gloria james and i have the same room i'm rule i'm telling lebron go ahead and complain about the official here's the thing if you want to say that it's too reductive or too simple to blame it on the officials because so much else happens over the course of a game, bad sportsmanship, you know, it's a bad musician who blames his instruments, whatever, fine. But what the Lakers absolutely were, and this is irrefutable, with that missed call on the last play of the game, LeBron driving to the basket, Clearly fouled, and this is not you and me saying it. This is not the millions, billions of Laker fans worldwide saying it. It's not Lakers Twitter saying it. It's actually the league saying it in what was the quickest admission of an F up I've ever seen. Yeah, it was in the pool report. I mean, like, yeah, it was no, like right away. They didn't even say, like, we have to go. It's like, we, no, we missed it. The crew yeah. missed it. Um, yeah, it, it was terrible. It's never this quick from the league, like not even from the, the referees explain or whatever, like from the league this is before the last two minute report came out, which basically the last two minute report should just be a shrug emoji. Like, but here's what I will say. What the Lakers were absolutely robbed of was the opportunity to win the game because you can't say definitively that LeBron would have made both of those free throws. Maybe he misses them both. Maybe they go to overtime. But we will never know because the referees missed a glaringly obvious call. Obvious. Yeah, yeah. and Eric Lewis is a crew chief, and they, they talked about it after the game. But it is I, – I understand what you're saying, and you're right. There are a thousand things that happen. Lakers didn't play well in overtime. It took them at least two and a half minutes to kind of recover mentally from what happened. Patrick Beverly – started them off down a point because he got a technical for bringing a camera on the floor, which while to show the high, referee, yeah, to show the referee he showed it from the digital display on the back of the camera, uh, the play where LeBron got fouled. And while I respect the art, the sort of uh, artistic merit of that particular, you can't do that right there. No. You can't put your team behind all of those things are relevant. Do it after, Roger. do it after and get fined, whatever right. you can't. Do all it of then. those things are relevant to the, Big picture, hey, now, nuts, let's not blame the ref. Like, LeBron James should have been on the free throw line with two, with like three tenths of a second left in the game. Yeah, that's it. And the Lakers in every game, players make mistakes. You wish you make this one, you blow a layup, like, oh, you make a play over here and that one doesn't matter. Okay, but this is the Lakers on the road against one of the elite teams in the Eastern Conference, and they played their bleeps off to stay in this game and to 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 stay tight and, and all of these things. They continue to play in the way that Lakers fans, I think, have come to expect them to and appreciate. And you, you simply can't miss that call. It was too... I, I don't... I don't know what it is that you're looking for. Like a lot of times uh, Steph Curry gets the line because you see where the ball ends up, you know, on a three pointer. And you're like, well, Steph isn't going to miss by that much um, on, on a three. 
when was the last time LeBron James, who's going to pass Kareem in a week or whatever it is for the career scoring title, missed a layup the way that ball came out of his hand? It just I, I know you don't want to blow the whistle and decide the game with the free throw. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing well, I mean, for the league. Yeah, I mean, at some point, again, you don't want the referees to decide the game, but if you're going to take it that literally, then you might as well just declare the last minute will go unreffed. That is the referees. But not calling fouls is just as much the referees deciding games as as blowing the whistle ridiculously. And and it was a badly officiated game throughout up to this point. Like there was a play where Anthony Davis got called for a foul when Malcolm Brogdon was hooking his arm. Mm -hmm. And again, like this was obvious. Um, They had, the Lakers had to waste a challenge call, which they, they got rewarded. And it was, by the way, it was about three minutes to go. Anthony Davis defending Jason Tatum on a drive called for a foul that shouldn't have been. No, it was a critical part of the uh, uh, moment in the game. Darwin was correct to use his challenge there. And he did. He just wished it's another thing. Why don't you keep your challenge if you if you call it and are successful? And then in the meantime, too, for the Lakers this season, and this is, again, not me as a Laker fan being sour grapes, Laker fans watching this show, listening to this podcast, Lakers Twitter, down the line, being sour grapes. The Lakers have been hurt a lot down the stretch of close games admitted in these last two minute reports that now just feel like double middle fingers Mm -hmm. when you see them like this is not Laker fans complaining or just you know thinking that Lakers exceptionalism should apply to them at all times this is the league saying we missed these calls and as LeBron said after the game and LeBron was mad after this game, I don't blame him. He was mad, but I, I thought he summed this up really well, both in terms of his frustration, but also the practical ramifications of this quote. We have no room for error. This is one of the best games we played all year and to have it fall on somebody else's judgment or non-judgment is just ridiculous. Like he's right. Like the Lakers, the Lakers cannot afford to have the referees F up a game for them. Like, you know, let alone multiple games. Yeah. And, and look, they've effed up games on their own too. Like, you know, the last minute of overtime on both sides of the floor, I don't know what the hell the Lakers were doing, but offensively and defensively, like whether you agree with the fouling, you know, fouling while down strategy or not, whatever, they were way too slow in fouling their last possession. They were walking the ball up the court. I'm like, guys, like, the F are you doing? Hustle, hustle. Yeah, like yeah, I, no, I, they are not blameless in this. No, and you know, Pat Beverly made a couple really great offensive plays down the stretch, including his first dunk in like three years that left LeBron astonished. Nate, you took a screen grab of it and tweeted it out. It was one of the most miraculous offensive plays I've ever seen. Offensive um, rebound, put, put back dunk. It was incredible and like something genuinely unexpected. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, have Pat expected... always been a good offensive rebounder. I wouldn't have thought he could get up like that though. Like, no, I mean, it, it was shocking, but, um, you know, he also fouled Jalen Brown, you know, you, the, the controversy over not following with up three <laughs> with 14, that's something maybe we can talk about for Monday's show too. Fans are complaining about Darvin and that were a lot of anger around Darvin um, and, and his choices for, for this game on Saturday, on, on Saturday night. And again, we'll get to a lot of these on Monday. There's so much to unpack in this game, what it means for the Lakers with this four games left on this really difficult road trip and what it would have meant for them to win this first game to get two games under 500 instead of now four um, with, with these hard games left to play. I, all of those things are important, but, Don't change the fact that LeBron James needed to make, should have been able to be in a situation where he needed to make one free throw out of two to win the game. And by the way, if he missed those free throws, everything is still, the the whole overtime plays out differently because first of all, Patrick Beverly doesn't get the Lakers a stupid technical and start them off down by a point, but also LeBron, they, they don't have to bounce back from that. 
If LeBron misses two free throws, the team is like, okay, we didn't get screwed. LeBron did something weird. He missed two free throws. That's surprising. Let's go win it in overtime. Mentally, to come back from that play and that non-call and have to go into the overtime, I'm not saying they shouldn't have played better. I'm not saying that is difficult. I'm just saying mm-hmm. to come back from that. Even LeBron, I think you know, for the first min- minute, two minutes of that overtime period, I think was still on tilt. Yeah. And, you know, it took a couple, at least one shot that felt like it was a six point swing. LeBron takes a quick early shot three. I think as he was pissed off, Jalen Brown comes out and makes one on the other end. Six point swing right there at the beginning of the overtime. I don't know what the league does about this. I don't know if it's a fourth official. I don't know. If I've been calling for a fourth f- official mm-hmm. for a few years now. Yeah, I don't You've know if it's this. if it's some form of VAR. I don't know if it's some form of automatic replay or if you know. Yeah, I get it. It's it's different than football that has like automatic replays. The NFL like on every turnover this because the game naturally stops in the end, and it doesn't in the NBA. And there could be a lot of times where you'd have to be like, okay, how do we rewind play? So I get all of these problems. What the NBA can't keep doing is what they're doing now, which is our release bad. reports saying, <laughs> sorry, we bleeped this up, which again is good from a transparency standpoint. So at least the you know fans know they're trying to be honest and not like rig games or whatever, but it doesn't help. It doesn't help solve the problem of officiating getting worse at a time when it's only getting harder and harder and harder to officiate these games properly. Yeah. I mean, it just, I'm sympathetic. You should be, you should be feeling all of you, what you feel right now. I, it, they really have needed a fourth official for a while because the game is too fast now and too spread out. Like, you know, for a long time, everything used to be all bunched up within like 15 feet. It's easier to keep track of everything. Right, and you let it, you let every game play out like it's pro wrestling. So basically, right. nothing is a foul. It makes it very easy to call games. Right. Nothing is ever a foul ever. And you right. know, and 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 every game is you know, you go back to the Jordan documentary, and the most shocking thing about it is like these highlights of Jordan against the Pacers in like the Eastern Conference Finals, and there's two minutes left in the fourth quarter, and it's 86 to 82. Like nobody yeah. wants to watch that. Yeah, I, I just I've been thinking for a while for a few years. I mean, I've said it before. They they need a fourth official. The game's just too fast, too athletic, too spread out. That you can't expect three people to cover this. Um, it's just frustrating, and it's it's not even it's because it's it it's embarrassing for the league. It's embarrassing for the game, and then doubly, it is taking a Lakers team that. Geez, it's it, it may not be quite as bad as everybody thought, you know, with two and ten and all that stuff. And you know, you start to combine the games that the Lakers effed up on their own and should have won with the th- two or three now that the the league um, through the bad officiating has robbed them of a chance to win. And four games under five hundred could, at the very least, be five hundred. Yeah. It could be a game over five hundred. And you know, this looks more and more like a team I think people would want to see in the playoffs. Look, we're going to get into a lot more of this from Monday's show. We're going to get into more details from this game. Uh, For those unaware, the Pacers and Miles Turner uh, worked out an extension, which there is some degree of disagreement about whether or not he is still trade eligible this season. But if nothing else, it is a a, it's a wrinkle of complication, Um, if not less uh, likely to be traded to Lakers now. It certainly seems that way, if nothing else. Uh, So that's something we'll definitely want to get into. Um, Lonnie Walker returned for uh, for this game. Uh, Austin Reeves is going to be reevaluated on Thursday. So a Mm. lot we will get into on Monday. But we felt it was really appropriate for this game to just let this be a a, – I wouldn't say a place for healing because I doubt any of you all feel good now, but at least – at least you know we were there for you in the way the referees clearly were not there for the Lakers. A rare Sunday effort. Um, so before we go, Andy, we do have a couple notes, including this. 
Well, that Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks. Laker fans, if you have not signed up for Prize Picks yet, you are missing out on Daily Fantasy Made Easy. Prize Picks has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. They offer more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator, superstar players, bench players, no refs because you wouldn't want to select any of them. Just pick two to sele- two to six players and predict whether or not they will notch more or less than their prize pick stats projection. You can win up to 25 times your money. Prize picks offers everything from NFL to women's college basketball, disc golf even. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Safe, fast withdrawals. Download the prize picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. Sign up. Play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks using the promo code Locked On. Do not forget, again, that promo code locked on at the sign up. You want your instant match. If you're not playing prize picks, you don't know what you're missing. Like yeah, the I'm waiting for pri- missing calls. Yeah, I'm waiting for prize picks to create a daily fantasy category for th- Lakers that end up being screwed on the two minute report. Um, yeah. Anyway, go to TurboTax. Pick LeBron. <laughs> Pick LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Strong bet. Pick LeBron. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by TurboTax. Andy, go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and, and file for you so you can do not taxes. You can show your eyes things that aren't taxes. You can move them, unpack a moving box of not taxes. You can go climb a mountain of not taxes, eat things that are not taxes, <laughs> write angry letters to the league about the officiating, <laughs> things that are not taxes taxes mm-hmm. with turbo turbo tax an expert will do your taxes from start to finish ensuring that your taxes are done right guaranteed so you can relax and really let that angry letter flow <laughs> so there are no typos so that there are no issues with syntax or grammar and that uh, uh, david stern under david stern adam silver understands it you know what write david stern too because you're that mad and maybe the ghost of david stern can fix this as well but adam silver can fix it and he will feel good that you're done with your taxes and that you wrote a beautiful letter come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes write letters instead visit turbotax.com to learn more intuit TurboTax full service products only video meeting while expert does your taxes is required see the guarantee at turbotax.com slash guarantees all right see everybody uh monday